day, Pierre. How are you? Last week I said that I was going to make a timber stool and you know what? There it is. I've delivered. Now, you might say, hey Dave, that's the stool that you showed us last week. Well, it's not. I'm going to show you the process of how to make it. This thing's totally out of recycled timber, a bit of a sand and some wax, and it looks great. Stick with me. I'll show you how it happens. Today, the stool is my co-host. Barry's still in bed. Yeah, I'll throw up a picture of the cutting list for this stool, all the timber that I needed. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can go and get some recycled timber and mill it all up yourself if you've got some machines like I've got, or you can walk straight into a hardware store and buy dimensioned timber. Now, they'll have this sitting on racks. You can buy expensive stuff or you can buy the cheaper stuff. Expensive stuff is normally clear. Uh, if you buy the cheap stuff, it's normally got knots and everything in it, and you take the risk of whether it's going to have a twist further down the track, even though it might look stable when you buy it. Give you an indication of the price differences. It won't be the same all around the world, obviously. People are going to buy timber for different prices. First thing I did was make the legs. Now, the legs are 670 millimeters long point to short point and a compound angle of 7 degrees by 7 degrees. Now, that might sound a little bit daunting to people who are first starting off, but basically it means instead of cutting a square cut across the end of the piece of timber, I'm going to cut it at 7 degrees off 90. The other thing is, because I've said 7 by 7, I'm going to have 7 degrees one way and also the other direction will also be 7 degrees. So I'll have a, a slide up. Now I'll show you the underside of here and you'll see that the legs are 7 degrees off 90 as I was saying. So I could say 83 degrees by 83 degrees but that's going to start confusing everyone. The reason we do this is so when the stool is standing on the floor it's got a good flat surface for it to stand on not on a point. If it was 90 degrees you'd have one little point of the stool of the, le of the leg would be touching the floor and it would tear out and all that kind of stuff. Important thing is with this compound cut is that you replicate it from the bottom to the top. It stays consistent, parallel to each other. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but the thing is, when you're making the cut, make sure that the cut's going to be the same direction on the bottom of the leg as it is on the top of the leg. Because then that allows the stool at the top, the seat part, to sit nicely on the leg as well. The other thing I've shown you is the length is long point to short point very important to do that. It's very hard to create a long point to long point because the long point's on that side and long point's on the opposing side at the other end. Long point to short point and that's 670 millimeters. The legs are the largest section of the timber, 38 by 38, which is inch and a half by inch and a half imperial. We create a little bit of a chamfer on those. Now I use my router table to create the chamfer. You can use a hand plane, not a problem at all. I'm talking about the cuts. I used my capex because I've got one and it's easy. Now a lot of people are going to have a compound miter saw. That's great. You can do it with that. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to have a power tool at all. That's fine. Everyone's got a different circumstance. So if you haven't got a compound miter saw, not to worry. There's plenty of ways you can do it. You can still do it by hand. You can go around the leg with a bevel and mark your seven degrees and your seven degrees the other direction as well. And then you just follow those lines with a handsaw. Now, how neat is it going to be? It depends on how good you are with a handsaw. It can be very neat. Not a problem at all. They used to do it all the time. Okay, so we've got inch and a half by inch and a half uh, dimension timber for the legs. And then we have to have the rails. 32 millimeters thick by 83. And in Imperial, that's three and a quarter by inch and a quarter. If you wanted to, you can make them in three and a half. Your call, not a problem at all. Now, they're going to have just straight out seven degree cuts. You can see the whole thing is based around seven degrees. So, seven degree cuts, and I'll show you up here. So, this angle here, instead of being 90 degrees, is now, if I'm coming off this plane, it'll be 97. If I'm coming off this plane, it'll be 83 degrees. <laughs> Look, it makes sense as you do it, so don't panic. Uh, the chamfers are all around the leg, and we're going to chamfer the rails as well. Go slowly, so you don't tear out. Remember, this is all recycled, even though it looks brand new. 
I had this left over from when I was building and it was in a in a roof and I pulled the timber out because we did uh, an extension to a place and it was it looked all pretty good so I left it in the rack it's been sitting there a while now here's a little tip when you're assembling this bad boy put the ends together first so we're going to have two legs the top rail and the bottom rail put those together first the reason being inside here I don't know if you can see in here we're using pocket hole screws to do all the assembly and there's not much room up there so you want to be able to have as much room as possible without this particular rail here getting in the way bit of a jigsaw puzzle isn't it that brings me to the seat now the seat if you want you can just make it out of one solid piece of timber or a bit of, a couple of pieces of plywood or one piece of plywood whatever you want it doesn't matter but if you want a sexy seat like this one see the top I've made that out of one piece of Merbo in the middle and the outside two pieces of Douglas fir everyone in Australia would know that as Oregon next part we have is the actual construction now I'm going to construct it with pocket hole screws I've got an old K4 Craig pocket hole jig and it's <laughs> it's seen better days uh, but I show you how to set the thing up because we're going with the uh, inch and a half and inch and a quarter you set the jig up so that the stop collar on the drill bit is set for inch and a quarter and also you'll set sorry, you'll set the guide block in the jig for inch and a quarter as well then you just get your drill pop the drill bit into it with the stop collar mounted and do your holes so we pop the pieces of timber that we're going to create the pocket holes in so these guys these rails I've created the pocket holes in I haven't created any pocket holes in the legs and I show you also with the top now this is a bit of a tricky one because Merbo is a hardwood and Douglas fir is a softwood I've chosen to do all my pocket holes in the hardwood so I'll stay with the coarse screws from Craig because they're going to be biting into the Douglas fir which is the softwood rule of thumb for hardwoods and softwoods if it's a conifer most of the time it's going to be a softwood all the rest of the trees are hardwood I'll show you a photo of a screw that I've put in or well, one of the principles of the Craig system is the screw will exit the piece of timber that you're going to connect to the other piece of timber it will exit that piece of timber right in the middle and you can see here that the jig sets it up so that that screw is coming out of the piece of timber that I'm going to fasten to the other one right in the middle and doesn't touch the surface and won't go out past the width of that thickness of timber <laughs> it's, that's a whole other story look I'll do a I'll do a special on pocket holing out but for the moment if you've got a pocket hole jig do it if you've got ordinary screws you can screw through there if you want to there's nothing stopping you it's your stool you can use dowels you can use a domino you can use biscuits whatever you want you can use to fix this but I'm doing it the nice quick and easy way and I don't know of a quicker way than pocket holing uh, okay so now we're joining we're joining the top together and I'll show you how to you have the timber facing up and you'll write numbers on it one two three so that when you're looking at the top that's how it's going to finish that's an easy reference because now you can turn the whole thing up over the other way from one two three flip it over the other side and you can put some marks on it where you want to drill your pocket holes so I've done that as well and then we take it over to the jig and start drilling the next thing I'm going to do is connect it all this is the seat I'm talking about the top I'll pop it down there like that so it's a bit easier to see and I'll show you a photo of the inside of the seat I prefer to glue seats I know that uh, all the pocket hole companies say oh you don't need glue but you know I'm just a little bit funny like that on the seat part I prefer to have glue so I'm, I'm using a bit of tight bond and I use a little glue brush to spread the glue so it's all even so I've got a good bond not just a couple of strips here and there so I'm holding it down with a Craig uh, bench clamp that I've put in this table and doesn't it make life easy I could have done it on my big multifunction table that I built and used the Festool uh, quick action clamps 
and it would have done just as good a job, but this is quicker. But I'm in a workshop and this is set up for me so I can just keep on going with it. Great system. And you can see I'm just moving it along the, the bench clamp and it's pretty easy. If you've got a wet rag, wipe down the excess glue and it's all out of the way. Then I take it over to the miter saw and I trim the ends. And then I've got a beautiful finish right across the end. It makes sanding so much easier. Again, if you haven't got a miter saw, well, you can use a shooting plane to knock off the ends or you can just put the ends in a clamp or a vise, give it a quick plane. We're going to cut the ends off at 45 degrees so that you're not going to catch yourself on anything. And here I'm showing you using the square. Uh, I'll, I'll use the square and the, my little Japanese uh, handsaw. Then I'll put it on my little disc sander, tidy up the corners, and then put it over the router table. Again, if you don't have a router table, you can do this with a hand plane. Next thing to do is start assembling the legs. So we'll pop that out of the way now and it's out of the way. We'll use it a little bit later on. Next thing is the legs. Uh, we've got all the legs machined up. They've been, the angles are correct on them now. We've got the seven degrees, we've got the lengths. And the lengths that I'm giving you for the rails are long point to long point. Don't get caught. It's only the legs that are long point to short point. The rails are all long point to long point. We assemble the ends first. We can call those the gables if you want to. And you'll notice that it goes together quite easily and also you'll have to keep it I'll show you up here. Up the top here, you'll see that the, the piece of timber touches the underside of the seat, this rail. Now, because we're on seven degrees, the inside of this rail, inside here, I might show you a photo, is going to be lower down because we're dealing with angles here. So just set it up so that it's there. Now, when I'm screwing it together, I'm using the pocket hole system again. When I'm screwing it together, because the leg is one quarter of an inch thicker than the rail, I use a quarter inch packer to hold the rail at the right height because we're working from behind. We're not working from the face that's exposed to everyone. So we'll put a quarter inch packer in there and the, the, hold it down with the bench clamp in, the, uh, in my little bench here. I love this bench. <laughs> it was so much fun making it. Jeez, it's handy. Uh, back to the story, Dave. And it's ready. Do both sides, do both cables, and you're ready to do the sides. Now the sides obviously are longer. The reason we do the sides last is because it's such a tiny area on the cables here. So we've got plenty of room to get the screwdriver in the back here for the square drive on the Craig screws, the pocket hole screws, and away we go. Same process, do all that, and you'll notice the lengths that I've given you, they'll be slightly lower than the gables. Now there's a reason for that. You can have two different heights. Uh, people can have different le length legs so they could choose to put their foot up on there instead of putting their foot up on there. And the other reason, which is the one that I like, is because if you don't get the joints quite right, you don't see them because they're not all lining up with each other. All these rails aren't the same height. So eh, no one's going to see. The next thing to do is to screw the frame of the stool to the seat and again we've got four pocket holes there uh, that we screw it to the seat with with the pocket hole screws they're all two inch screws and I've got a whack of a collection of them I love them uh, then we start to sand now one of the important things to sand is up here we just get a sanding block I just use the pad from my sander with some paper on it the sanding block and I take all go around there and I I sand about an eighth of an inch chamfer on it. That stops it tearing. If you're moving it across the floor and it catches on something, it's not going to tear the timber and splinter it out all over the place. It's a handy little idea, isn't it? Next thing I'm going to do is to sand it all down. The legs I didn't worry about sanding, they're straight out of my thicknesser and it gives an excellent result, so I just 
left them like that. The top is the part everyone's going to look at. And that's the part that they're going to be sitting on. You don't want any splinters or anything on that one at all. It's going to catch on people's clothes. So I took that down to 320 grit. I, I always go 80, 120, 180, 220, 320. And it's brilliant. Does the job. Then I waxed the whole thing. Now I use the Triple E. Use the same wax that I used on Emerald's pencil box and it comes up great I love that wax look how look at this like that's it's beautiful it really is it's so smooth the only problem with me doing things like this is that people ask people see what I do and they go hey Dave <laughs> I know what's coming next can you make something for me eh, all right <laughs> anyway uh, so that's it. It's a handy little stool. It's a beautiful little project. Now, depending on what equipment you have will be the amount of time that it takes to make it. If you have hand tools and you're starting out, don't expect to finish it in an hour. This is going to take you all weekend. If you've got a setup like mine, this took me around about 45 minutes. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Check the Facebook site out, give me plenty of these, and leave a comment. It's a great little project. Let me know what you think of the store. You know, if you want me to do other projects like this, it's good fun. Make perhaps some suggestions as to what, what I should make here. See you next time. Thanks for watching.